It has been an incredibly exciting week for Final Cut Pro users. Not only did we get Final Cut Pro 11, but we also got a huge update to Final Cut Pro for iPad version 2.1. So in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive on all things Final Cut Pro for iPad. The first feature for Final Cut Pro on iPad version 2.1 is the new Enhance Light and Color. To take advantage, we'll go ahead and just drop a shot down here on my timeline. Then when I'm ready to color it, I can press inspect. From there, making sure we're in the effects panel, we can push add and we can go to color adjustments. Go ahead and open up color adjustments and you'll see we now have this option for enhance light and color. This will use Apple intelligence to dynamically adjust the scene to what it thinks will look best. It's really great at adjusting for skin tones and getting the white balance just right. Once you've used the enhanced light and color effect, you can always come down here and make further adjustments as necessary to each individual shot. Now to go along with the enhanced light and color is 12 new color grading presets. I don't have time to cover each and every single one of them, but you can locate them by going on up into your effects in the top right corner, then we'll go to effects right here, and you'll notice at the top, it's showing us all of the new options, and all of them with this blue dot indicate that that is a new available option in version 2.1. Let's go ahead and download all of the new effects by pressing this cloud icon. And once those are done, we can go ahead and just tap and drag it directly onto the shot that we want to apply it to. If we feel like it's applying too much of a specific color grade, we can go over into our effects on the left side and we can tap on the specific color grading option that we selected. From there, we can make further adjustments by scrolling through all of the various options. And at the very bottom, we can adjust the mix by tapping and dragging to the left or to the right. Over in the Mac version, we saw the new picture in picture effect and call out effect, and those have both made their way onto the iPad version. To get access, let's go ahead and apply a shot above another shot, just like so. And we want to go ahead and highlight this gelato cup. Let's go on up to our effects in the top right corner. Then we can go into effects, and in the new panel, you'll see both call out as well as picture in picture. Let's first apply the picture in picture effect by tapping and dragging directly onto the clip we want it to be on. And I'll go ahead and tap and drag the playhead further ahead so we can see the effect taking place. If you feel like you're not happy with the end result there, we can always jump directly into the effect here in our effects panel. And you'll immediately notice these on-screen controls that give you super easy access to this tool. Using the blue arrows in the corners, I can tap and drag to adjust the scaling. I can tap and drag directly on the video to move its position. We can use this center on-screen control to adjust the position of the video within its container. And then taking a look on the left-hand side, we have access to all of the same controls that come on the new Mac version. For example, we can adjust the animation to go from full screen to something like center scale. We can adjust the move style from combo if we wanted to. We can add in more roundness to the picture in picture effect. We can even give it a nice outline as well as adjust the outline width. We can also change the color of the effect. And then at the bottom, we have numeric values for each of the different controls that we've adjusted on the screen as well as the option to adjust the scale of our video. Another really incredible effect that we get is the new callout effect. To apply it, we'll just scroll onto the top to the new effects. We can tap and then drag it directly onto whatever shot we wanna work with. The callout effect is going to have very similar controls to the picture in picture effect, but it's much more suited if you have a specific shot where you want to still show the background. Again, we can select our shot if we want to access the controls, then jump into the callout effect. From there, we can make adjustments like the position of our callout. We can adjust the scaling. We can even adjust where the callout is choosing from. And then over on the left-hand side, you're going to have a whole bunch of controls to further the effect. In addition to the 12 new color grading presets and two new effects, we also get access to these powerful new modular transitions. These are incredible if you wanna create a split screen effect inside of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. And again, these are also on the Mac version. So if you want a more in-depth guide, you're gonna to wanna to check out that video I've already created. To get access, we'll just go on up to content and effects in the top right corner and we'll locate our transitions. Again, you'll see all of these new transitions at the top and we can download all of them at the same time by pushing the cloud icon. My personal favorite is the side-by-side -side split. With two clips down on the timeline, we can apply the transition. Let's go ahead and select our side-by-side -side split 
drag that down onto the timeline. Now initially, this is going to work just like any other transition you've used previously. You can tap on it, you can extend out the duration, but what's really cool about these modular transitions is that if you extend out the duration, it increases the duration of the effect. What I mean by that is if we don't extend out the duration and I push play, you can see we get this nice basic split animation, but maybe we want to hold on that split animation directly in the middle. To do so, let's just extend out the duration of our transition and I'll push play. You can see how it holds the split effect and then continues through. Additionally, if we jump into the inspector and select our transition, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of controls that you don't typically have with other transition types. We can select if there's a build in, build out animation, we can swap the sides. We can change the move style animation. You can also adjust stuff like the line thickness and you can change the color of that line. Again, if you want a deeper dive on these modular transitions, you're gonna wanna check out the video I've already done for Final Cut Pro on the Mac. Another super exciting thing about this update with Final Cut Pro for iPad is that there are 25 new soundtracks. If you've used soundtracks in Final Cut Pro for the iPad previously, you're gonna know exactly how these work. You can locate them here in your soundtracks folder and you'll see all of the new soundtracks directly here at the top. You could choose to download all of them at the same time if you wanted or just choose to download one individually. Let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. That song sounds pretty good to me, so let's go ahead and add it to the timeline. I'll just tap and drag it, and let's move this so it starts at the beginning of our video. But what's super great about soundtracks in Final Cut Pro for iPad is that they will automatically adjust to be the duration of whatever your video is. Let's go ahead and shorten this clip by tapping on this trim to playhead button. And now you'll notice that the waveforms have changed in a way where the soundtrack will end right here at about 20 seconds. Let's go ahead and listen to the end of this. One of my favorite features for Final Cut Pro on iPad is live drawing. If you have an Apple Pencil, it's a must use feature. And fortunately with this version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad, we get a whole bunch of new controls and brushes. Just like before, you can access live drawing here at the top of the screen. If you have the new Apple Pencil Pro, you can go ahead and squeeze it to get access to all of the different controls. I'm gonna go ahead and just tap and drag with this pencil and we'll see all these additional brushes that weren't here previously. One of my absolute favorites is the watercolor brush. And let's go ahead and just change the color of this to red. I am a really terrible artist, so I have apologize to all of you artists out there, but you can see that if I go ahead and just paint it on, it looks really incredible. And all of this will auto animate over in the main timeline. So once I'm done, I can push done and we'll see that we now have this new live drawing and we can push play. Now the next series of features that come are just quality of life updates, but they are a welcome change to Final Cut Pro for iPad. Firstly, with the Apple Pencil Pro and of course Magic Keyboard, we now have better haptics happening inside of Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Previously, if I were to use the Apple Pencil and drag the playhead to the edges, there wasn't any haptic feedback as I approach the edge. But now we have haptic feedback as we get to the edge. This just makes it so much easier for precision editing. The next update is some amazing changes to the picture and picture viewer mode. To get access, we can just tap on the three meatballs and we can go ahead and change this over to picture and picture. Previously, this window would lock to a specific corner and we didn't have a ton of control over it. But now I can drag and place this anywhere I want in the viewer. Additionally, this acts much more like a regular window you would see maybe over on Mac OS. We can go ahead and tap and drag on the corner to adjust the scale scale just like you would with a regular window. This makes the picture in picture mode much more usable and I'm really excited to see this implemented into the iPad version. The next addition for Final Cut Pro on iPad is the option of higher frame rates. To get access to these, we'll go ahead and create a new timeline. I'll just tap this down arrow and then select add and under format, let's change it to custom. Now, if we go to the frame rate options, we can change this all the way up to 120 frames per second. And last but certainly not most least on this list is a bunch of new keyboard shortcuts were added. I don't have time to cover all of these within this video, but if you ever want to see all of the keyboard shortcuts available to you, not just in Final Cut Pro, but also other iPad apps, you can always just push and hold the command key down and that will give you a full list. From there, you can scroll through and see all of the keyboard shortcuts you can use, getting the most out of whatever piece of software 
you are using. If you're just getting started with Final Cut Pro for iPad, I strongly recommend that you check out my complete user guide right here that covers all of the details you absolutely need to know as an editor on your iPad. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.